to grow and be, be more fruitful. So uh, I asked Matt Zerusen, who was the, the president, to give the address. He couldn't make it. Homer's going to give that presentation for us today. So Homer, thanks for standing in for Matt today. Thank you, Greg, and thank you for all of your years of dedication and work for Sarah at all levels. Um, I'll get back up here. Okay. Uh, well, I'm the last button on Gabriel's coat. We <laughs> will, um, and if you were looking uh, to find a, you know, where in the world is Matt Zeruzan, when you look at the picture in here on, uh, on page 17, that's, that's him. Um, so the Zeruzan the Zeruzan family uh, have a foundation. They have done work for years in campus ministry all over the United States. So I'll get to how Matt Zeruzan as the co-founder of this Newman Connection um, after I tell you first that this program originally called College Connection is a Sarah program. We own that program called College Connection. So uh, the key thing here is that this whole theme that we need to talk about is keeping our students that are going away from high school, going away from their family, probably for the first time, how do we keep them connected to the Catholic Church? Well, the reason that Matt and Greg had a play in this, asked me to do this, is that I am what's referred to as an ambassador for College Connection, Newman Connection. Simply means that in our diocese, Kansas City, St. Joseph in Missouri, um, has been working with College Connection, then Newman Connection, since its founding. Um, the person that is connected with Cassie Campton, the outreach, high school outreach director for Newman, um, they just asked the people that were doing this in Sarah Clubs, please continue. We need boots on the ground. So first I want to tell you a little bit about the history, the part, first part of this. Um, and your question is very logically, why is it important to Sarah, to Sarans, to you and me, and to the future dis discernment of future priest and religious. How is keeping youth in college that important? Well, over the last three days, we've heard from vocation directors, uh, we've heard from others in the presentation we've had about the importance of ca college Catholic campus ministry. So part of this, you have already heard, but back 12 years ago, we. Uh, a fine gentleman. Uh, I see a few gray heads out here. How many people know the name Dick Stolly? Okay, uh, about a th maybe 40 percent. Okay, Dick Stolly, by history of Sarah USA Council, is the first president of the USA Council. Um, after Dick worked up through the various responsibilities of Sarah USA Council, he continued to be very active in his home club, Lima, Ohio. He became aware that college students going away stopped practicing their faith. He said, we gotta do something about this. He started a program in his club, the local area, to connect the graduating high school seniors with the campus ministry wherever they were going. We, he had to do some research to find out where are the campus, where are the students going, where are the campus ministries. Well, after a year or so of doing this, he brought the program, his idea, his brainchild, to the council through the vocations committee. Myself and Judy were part of that committee at that time. And we thought it was a good idea. He convinced us right away. We took the concept to the USA Council Board. If you're gonna do something nationwide, it's under the structure of USA Sarah. So some people on the board, well-meaning, said, how has this got to do with our mission? <laughs> well, the fact is, and, and you've already heard it this week, so it's, it's redundant perhaps, but I'll repeat it again. Pr 
prayer is the foundation of discernment, being open to God's call. If they lose their face, if they get distracted by sororities and fraternities and sports and other programs and other parties, stop going to mass, don't have a connection with religious, we're going to lose them. Now, we started off saying that 80%, at least 80% of the college incoming freshmen will not be practicing their faith at the end of the fourth year. And that's a scary statistic. Dick said we've got to do something about it. So, Judy, she's got her legs up. I'm, I was going to ask you to stand, but don't stand. Everybody knows Judy. <laughs> Judy and Jack and a few others, myself, started working in scattered areas around as volunteers, gathering information. And we, I have to give our a little salute out here to uh, Mark Bonkowitz. He always talks about on membership, get the low-hanging low fruit first. Well, we did that for College Connection. We went to the Catholic high schools. Every one of them in our area, that is the Austin School, got right on board. They gave us in March or April, no, March, well, March, April, or May, the names of all the graduating students, the college they were going to, and the city in which that was. And with that information, we could find out where is the connection? We created documents and we mailed letters and we sent this information to the students and got some of these students connected with that process. Well, it was became a robust program with a lot of volunteers, but we were also running out of time and effort and it uh, you had to redo it every year. There's always a new college you didn't have last year, so you're adding that to the database. So we grew it to about 12,000 students, incoming Catholic students in campus, connected to campus ministry. And we were getting tired. Um, through Judy's work, working with the board, they identified this company called Newman. It's actually a, a foundation for the, the Zeruzan family. And they have been working, as I mentioned a moment ago, all over the nation in Catholic, well, well, in the public school, colleges, universities to identify, and they actually provide uh, through this foundation study materials to the Newman and other campus ministries. So they've had this ongoing relationship. So Matt Zeruzan and his dad came to Providence. We had a conversation. We decided we'll try this a three-year program, and we'll look at each other and decide if it's working. Well, at the end of the first year, it was obvious they took a hold of it, they were ready to run with it, but there was one condition. They still needed us, they needed the Sarans, boots on the ground. Confirming with the Catholic high schools, they started working more with Catholic high schools, but they went across the nation. Where we had Sarah clubs and Sarans as ambassadors, we were doing pretty good. They hired staff, people to call every Catholic high school in the United States. Well, over the last, $50, yeah, well, and it's this grown, I'll give you another number here in a few minutes, but they hired more staff each year. They created the database and anybody that's involved with computers and all the stuff that's necessary for security and input and all that sort of thing, it's a huge task. They took on that task. They just want us to be the boots on the ground. And we've continued to grow. Um, is this little white thing down here the clicker? Let's see if I can make this work. Let's see here. Oh, Katie, would you push the button, please? Um, I should have gone to a tutor class here to find out what to do. Okay. Um, the need is great. What we've been talking about is college campus ministry. And again, the key here, and the reason it's important to Sarans is that we're losing too many kids, even from the beginning. Now, the thing that they've come up with in the last 14, 12 to 14 months is gonna change direction completely, and I really sincerely feel it's gonna increase the numbers tremendously. But you know that only 10% of the students, this is uh, based on some studies done recently, 10% of the students find a Catholic campus presence on their college. By themselves. Yeah, by just, just looking or just happen to get connected in some way. Maybe a friend invites them or something. But only one out of 10. So 
So that's 90% that isn't getting connected on their own. So we become that extra nudge. So this is something we have to change. It's something that we as members are equipped to change. We're in a position in the parishes and dioceses we serve, but we're going to need to reach beyond that as well. So one of the short-range goals of the vocation committee for the council is to help implement this year's program, 2019 program, which is to go beyond reaching the Catholic schools, seniors, to get to the public high school Catholic students. And I don't know what your statistics are in your diocese, but I don't know, maybe six, eight percent of the Catholic students go to Catholic high school. So there's a lot, you know, maybe 90 plus percent who are in public schools. That's the market that we're going after. They're starting to run out of Catholic schools that they can reach and contact and pull into the program, both diocesan and private schools. So we need to move on to that reaching into the parishes, public school children of families in all the towns. They are in parishes, and we need to reach those families, we need to reach those students with some kind of a recognition of this opportunity to bridge from high school and family where they're in a parish to a new parish family on their Catholic campus. So here we go. In this process, we had previously pushed. When Judy and I started with Dick Stolle, we said we're 80% of the kids are losing their faith. Now we need to focus on one out of 10 find campus ministry on their own. So this year we want to push that 10%. So in this concept, to keep our youth Catholic, to continue them growing in their faith, going to Mass, if they get connected with campus ministry, they have retreats, they have some Bible study, they have peer group, positive peer group emphasis. They meet men and women religious. They have an opportunity like the, the, the priest here uh, of the diocese, the vocation director was saying, he goes out to these campus ministry places anytime he can. So they see the presence of a, of a priest. Sometimes they're vocation directors, sometimes they're in, in just working in the area. So without seeing this presence, without practicing their faith, they won't have a prayer life. So as I mentioned, you know, Dick Stolle started the program. It's our program. We still have to be the boots on the ground. The program has two tracks. One I talked about already, and we've kind of exhausted that, the Catholic high schools. The second track is in parishes. That's where you and I live. That's where you and I work. That's where you and I serve uh, in the missions of promoting and creating a positive culture for vocations. So. This year, we're pushing uh, a program where we talk about a graduation ceremony for this, all the senior students in a parish. Now, if you have a, you know, we have several large parishes um, that have um, you know, 2,000, 3,000 families or more. Other parishes have families of six, seven, 800 families or so. Smaller parishes won't have as many students graduating seniors. It may be necessary to get two or three parishes that may do a confirmation class together and they have one ceremony and the bishop comes for three or four parishes. We may have to use that same kind of model and identify those Catholic seniors and have one ceremony for that particular group. So if it, if it works out, you get the pastor's support, you have that for that bigger parishes. Um, in the process, uh, what we're and there's going to be materials. Uh, this information is quite readable. Katie, thank you. This is my Vanna White down here on the front row, my lovely bride, Katie. Yeah. Okay. Sarah and Newman Connection. We can work together on this outreach program to get the Catholic seniors. Catholic high schools, I've mentioned, school administrators, they've been great but we're exhausting that. We need to get to the public schools, get them into the system, and I'll talk about part of that in a moment, and ultimately get them to the Catholic campus ministry location. The numbers here, and then we've only gone, we're gonna go back a couple, three years here, but uh, this is where we were in 2016. 
4,315 parishes, 50,000 Catholic schools. That is our, our, our kind of a database that we're working from. Um, you can see a small percentage there in the blue line. That indicates the percent that we're actually reaching in the total with the program in 16. In 17, we increased those numbers, a couple thousand. Catholic high schools grew more students from that group, so we were at 69. In 18, you can see the numbers grew again, over 75,000. And I have an, an admission to make mea culpa, mea culpa in our diocese. We got 700 students enrolled last year. A handful, five, came from parishes or public schools. That's what we have to change. And I'm, that's why I'm dedicated to this public school in the parish, parish celebration for the graduating seniors. Now, the graduation event doesn't have to be a, a real expensive, yes, uh, doesn't have to be a real expensive program put on. And I'll cover how, a couple of suggestions on how that can be done. And actually, I think Sarah Clubs can kind of have ownership of working with the pastors, of course, with approval, can kind of have ownership. We can be there and we can do some of the hosting for the event. Um, another kind of scary thing, 17,000 parishes in the USA. Parishes currently participating, 600. And that 600 is primarily in two, two or three states, dioceses that are working, like Bob Barrett's working on this very well up in the Detroit area. But most of those have come from phone calls being made trying to, to reach in, into parishes, asking parishes to do something to gather these seniors and have a, a graduation ceremony, so to speak, uh, recognition for them. So we're really only reaching 3%. We have a big task, but it can be done month to month, year to year. We don't expect this to be jumping from 75,000 to 150,000 in one year, but we can grow it much faster than it has been growing, Katie. Um, what I have here, and uh, Gino, Alice, Katie, I'm gonna have you hand out some things here. Uh, when we do a program in a in parish, basically, you would have an event, it could be done in context of a mass, either at the end times of the prayers and the intentions, or it could be done at the end of mass, just before um, the closing of the mass and blessing, have all the, the high school seniors come forward and have them be recognized. Um, one suggestion Todd Johnson gave from down in Texas was most of these students by April or so of the year, they know where they're going to school. They've made a, a college visit or two. They may have a, a t-shirt or a sweater with the school logos and their bear cat or the tigers or whatever team mascot there is. And they said, wear your school colors, your college colors. And so they wear those, they come to the Mass. It's not a real formal event, it's a recognition. And then following the Mass, uh, one place uh, the Sarans had pizza for the seniors and their parents. Others just did cake and coffee and juice. But during this ceremony, right after the Mass there, Sarans are there, and not the card that you've gotten, but a little bit smaller card. And all it asks for is their name, their college or university, and the city. It could be the University of Missouri in Columbia, Missouri, Kansas City, Missouri, or St. Louis. So we need to know the right campus. So we get those things. Local Sarans could go to the website for Catholic National, or pardon me, Newman Connection and enter that information. Pretty simple process. I've done some of that myself. Or simply collect the cards, mail them to the Newman Connection, and they will do the input. They will take names clear up till August, middle of August or so each year, but we'd love to have them between April and June. These recognition ceremonies kind of vary by parish. Uh, pastors say, well, I know things are real busy in May. We got Mother's Day. We have the students have baccalaureate. The students have graduation parties. They have their actual graduation ceremony, the cap and gown and all of that. So we don't want to do it in May. You could do it in June, first weekend, second weekend of June, or as Todd Johnson suggested, with them wearing their school colors, 
end of April, before they get into the rest of that. So work with the pastor. So now, uh, this card that has been handed out to you, if you fill out, hmm? okay, all right. Fill out the card, put your name and information on that card, hand it back to us, you will receive a packet of marketing materials. Katie, punch the other button. M marketing materials will be mailed to you. The, the benefit of this Zeruz and family, they also own a printing company. <laughs> so we will get very, you've seen some of the, the Viani vocation things that are very professionally printed. That's what we get to support this program. So you'll get a kit for every parish. Now if you've got four or five parishes, well our, our, our club has 19 parishes we serve. We're gonna get 19 packets, but um, this is just information that makes it easier to have that ceremony, to work with your pastors. Um, and then, Katie, if you punch it one more time, people say, well, where, where are we being successful? And here's the, we, we need you. You've seen that Uncle Sam's poster during the Second World War or First World War, you know, pointing out, we need you. Well, we need you boots on the ground to buy into the program, so please fill out that card for us. Katie? Now, people have said, well, where are you successful? Everything in the red are places where we have the bishop's support. We have a letter from the bishop endorsing this to their pastors, supporting, being supported by Sarah in those areas. And basically, the Newman Connection Foundation and group have invested $400,000 in what we've done since in the last eight years with Newman Connection. They've hired four people full-time. They've just interviewed and hiring two more people this month. So they're doing their part. We need to do our part. So please fill that out, turn it back in to us. We'll be back in touch with you. And through the vocation committee conference calls, the next one is February 18th. This will be a topic there, so tune in to the conference call. That'll be on your always forward. Thank you very much. Thank you.